Hello, I'm Jonathan, otherwise known as Senor Smoke, here at Curto's in Westchester County. I want to welcome you here on this beautiful, beautiful May day. Spring has sprung here, finally, in the Northeast. The, uh, the red-breasted robins are chirping above me over here. The magnolias are out of blooming. All is well in the world. And I want to introduce you to a new friend. This is Blue. Blue is a uh, recent addition to the portfolio. It is a caliber Thermoshell Pro Kamado. It's a mouthful, but the bottom line is it is a kick grill. I have to, I gave it a whirl and I can actually say that um, the two times that I've cooked on it so far, and I'm about to cook on it a third time because there actually are Fogo coals uh, lighting up in here right now. Um, I, I'm gonna say something and I, I, I'm not one to mince words, I'm not one to speak with hyperbole, but I'm gonna tell you right now, the chicken I made on here on Sunday night, I made a rotisserie chicken. It was the best chicken that I have ever made. All right, I kid you not, and that includes smoked tissin on the alfresco, it includes all the different crack back spatchcock butterfly chickens on the Kamados, the Primos, the Memphis Grill, grill the Traeger Timberline, all my pellet buddies, this grill, okay? Now, I don't know if it was the hands um, um, or the grill but or the, some combination, but it was absolutely out of this world. So let's just get into the pros on this right away, okay? The difference about this grill uh, compared to, say, the, uh, the Joe, Kamado Joe, the egg, Primo, is the fact that it's not ceramic. I absolutely dispelled the notion that this was going to have better insulation, heat retention, moisture retention than a all ceramic grill. It didn't make any sense. I mean, the ceramic, the ceramics that are used in the um, uh, the Kamado Joe um, and the egg are the ceramic um, mixture, from what I understand, that was actually used in the space shuttle for insulation. And you know, quite frankly, the space shuttle reentry back into Earth's atmosphere gets kind of hot. You better be insulated up. So. That was a great story to tell. And I'm saying to myself and to the reps, oh, this is metal. How could it be better insulated than ceramic? Well, let me, let me get into this. What happens with this grill, okay, from what I understand, that there's actually three layers of insulation. So in the interior, it's stainless. Then in the middle, there is a ceramic mixture in, in between, ready? And then the exterior, you have metal again. So. What happened, the taste test, was simply when we were lighting up last week, I had my kids come over to it. I gave it a little touch. I said, guys, come over here and feel it. And what happened? What happened? It, Alexander, why don't you come over here right now? Come over here and touch this. This is Alexander's first time on camera. Come over here and touch this. Is it hot? No. Tell the camera. No, it is not hot. It is not hot. Thank you, Alexander. Off to the side you go. It's not hot. I have, this is loaded with Fogo charcoal right now and is absolutely cool to touch. So that is an amazing thing and very important because if you have small children like I do, these ceramic grills do get incredibly hot and they're, they're, it's a safety issue. I mean, I used to tell my kids when I had the Joe ablazing back here in the Primo as well, I said, guys, you see that black grill over there? You see that red thing in the corner on that tripod? You stay far away from it. You don't need to uh, uh, be that way with the caliber, okay? So it's safer, one could say. Um, the other thing about it that is really cool is that because of this insulation, you're getting this insane moisture retention with the food. So um, the chicken that I made on the rotisserie, which you're probably seeing a few of them right now, was, uh, was mind-altering, quite frankly. You know, it was the first time in years that I can remember us actually fighting over who is going to get the breast meat, okay? The breast meat is typically eaten by somebody who's on a diet. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, there's not much flavor going on in there unless you put your rub underneath the skin. And um, what was going on, the breast meat was actually better than the dark meat on the legs and the wings. And it had a lot to do with the moisture that was still retained there. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was, the bre it was the, definitely the best breast meat that I've ever tasted. And that includes in restaurants. So kudos to me and kudos to the grill. Um, the thing about it, because again, we're staying on this topic of insulation, um, is that because of that, 
it actually will allow you to reuse the coal. It doesn't burn as much coal as the other guys do. So right now, this is my third cook with it, and I'm essentially using the same charcoal that I did with my two previous ones, just a little bit more added. And what that's gonna do, that's actually a cost savings right there, because you're not gonna have to load up on bags of charcoal as frequently. They have this really cool accessory called the Blaze Basket. The Blaze Basket allows you to cook indirectly on this, and for rotisserie cooking, it was absolutely a total home run because what's happening is with the blaze basket you're suspending the charcoal neck behind uh, whatever you're cooking thus it's not below it right so one of the problems when you when you are doing rotisserie style cooking is that the drippings if you don't have a pan underneath it the drippings will hit the coals and start flare-ups okay I've had some problems with that in the past particularly on the al fresco what the blaze basket does is the charcoal is completely insulated away from the food, okay, so there's no fear of a, of a, of a flare-up happening. That's huge. That's one of the reasons why I have not made a brisket on my Kamado, because um, I wanted, I mean, I've, I have done it once when I actually use a ceramic uh, plates to, in, you know, in between the brisket and the coals, but I wasn't getting enough smoke flavor that way, and I'm afraid with a brisket cook, because it's going to be done overnight, that the brisket is actually, the drippings will hit the coals on the Kamado or the Primo will come up and engulf it in flames and ruin a very expensive cut of meat. So um, I, I, I've stayed away from that. My briskets have traditionally been cooked on the pellet rolls. But now, with the blaze basket, I am actually going to hit a, a full pack of brisket on this bad boy and have no fear of you know, sleeping at night, whatever, uh, unless I'm out here drinking bourbon at 4 o'clock in the morning watching, watching the brisket smoke. Um, you never know there's a possibility for that. Um, I don't have to worry about a big flare-up happening because that blaze basket, again, is keeping the charcoal away from the uh, food, but it's also it's in a position where it's really getting a nice nice turn, nice heat with that spin of the rotisserie. Another actually very cool feature about the grill, which I'll open up here while this is supposedly smoking away, is um, they have on the basket, they have, what am I looking for? Yes, my tool. One thing that is a total pain in the neck about the other Kamado grills is that it's very challenging to load them up with more charcoal during a long cook, which you will have to do. So look at this thing over here. Okay, where are we? Oh, look at this, it lifts up, do you see that? So you can actually, you have access to the firebox here while you are cooking, okay? And you don't have to disturb the food underneath it. The, the design of this, the aesthetics are off the charts. It was delivered to our showroom, I had it downstairs for one day and I had numerous individuals that actually stopped by the grill in their tracks. And we're just like, this is absolutely gorgeous. So what I see, I mean, great pains were taken on the design and aesthetics to make this thing rock and rock hard, okay? Um, what I see for this is, you know, if you're a hardcore smoker, you know, I don't know if you're gonna buy this. You're gonna probably buy a Yoder. You're gonna probably buy, you know, maybe you buy the Primo. Uh, you know, buy an offset stick burner. But I see a big market for these and those who are doing really plushed out outdoor kitchens or somebody who just has a really, um, you know, the, the backyard, there's a definite sense of aesthetics and uh, uh, a design orientation back there and they want this to actually fit the, uh, the, the landscaping, so to speak. Um, so uh, again, the colors, you don't just have to get it in this blue, you can get it in red, you can get it in black, you can get it in stainless, um, but it's going to really, whether it's built into an outdoor kitchen or it's a standalone, it's really going to make your backyard pop.